I was hard stuck for 4 years before I learned from my mistakes and got promoted to challenger. Today we are going through 5 of which I consider to be the most important mistakes and the last one is completely going to change the way you see the game. The first mistake you make happens before the game even starts. In loading screen you are most likely scrolling through social media on your phone or just watching YouTube, which is time wasted not thinking about what you should be doing in laning phase. For example, in this lane we are playing against Caitlyn and Zeraf. We need to think about how they can kill us. In this case it's Zeraf stun into a Caitlyn trap and on our side we have set stun into Jinx choppers. This means that if somehow Zeraf misses his E you no longer need to feel afraid to step up and fight them. And it's the opposite if set misses his stun because that's when you should stay safe. Also, let's not forget about summoner spells. In this case we have cleanse, which means Seraph's stun basically doesn't exist. And this is also why you should do your best to keep track of enemy summoner spells too. This leads us into mistake number 2, which is not punishing enemies mistakes and not playing around your support and jump. We all know how weak ADCs are in the early game, but it doesn't really matter what champion you play because enemies constantly make mistakes and it's your job to punish them. Here we have a situation where Zeraf uses his stun on our support, which means we are now stronger and we should follow up. We're supposed to wait for Set to use his stun and then we flash and use our chompers to catch Zeraf, because again, they don't have a way to stop you anymore, so we can just go in like crazy. But in this case, we failed to punish their cooldowns and so we get nothing. But now, let's look at a situation where, in a similar matchup, actually the same matchup, our jungler ganks. Zeraf misses his stun, and because we know what we are supposed to do from loading screen, we now flash in, use choppers to get Seraph, and after that we even get a double get because of it. The difference is massive, and it only happened because we thought about all of these aspects in loading screen, and now we just apply them. Mistake number 3 is about vision. In this example, we are pushing the lane alone, without any vision, and so we just give a free kill to the enemy jungler. To avoid this, I created a simple rule. You can play past the middle of the lane, or under the enemy turret, unless you have deep vision set up. Deep vision means warding either in the river or the enemy jungle. These deep wards are important because if you ward like just outside of your lane, if you see the enemy jungler there, well it's already too late and the ward doesn't even matter at that point. Here we have a perfect example of how effective deep vision is. This deep ward now spots Ivern, meaning we know we can push or play aggressively in lane. Or even better, your jungler may now be tempted to come bot and counter gank the Ivern, which is a really powerful move enabled by a simple ward. An underestimated mistake is not learning to farm better. A lot of people say you get good at farming over time and if you just play long enough. But that is only partially true because you need to actually dedicate some brain cells to farming better because you don't want to lose uncontested minions like this one. So take some time and actively think while hitting the minion wave. Look at what your minions are attacking and if your attack would leave a minion really low HP, don't hit it because one of your own minions might take it from you. Also, don't rush it even if you need to push really fast. It's better to spend a couple more seconds farming every minion correctly than to wait 30 seconds in your base. I also plan to make a more in-depth video on this topic, so make sure you are subscribed to the channel so you don't miss it. These tips were mostly for early game, but this one is more general and more about mid to late game, and it's called playing with your teammates. We all know those moments when you recall for an item and allies fight without you, but actually what's happening is that your teammates are fighting and you are AFK. And this is where we introduce the concept of tempo. If you look at the map, you can draw parallel lines to the river. That's what I call tempo lines. The forwardmost line is what I call the front line, and that's where the action is happening. That's where you need to go. That's where you need to be to win the game. In this example, I see that two of my allies are recalling, which puts them off the front line, meaning we are playing 3v5. This is when I should be backing off and waiting for my team, but because I don't realize that, I get caught and I die for no reason. The opposite happens when you decide to recall for an item and your team starts a fight. This is actually your fault, not your team's, because you are not playing together with them, right? And in a lot of these cases, not recalling and staying with your team will actually be a better decision. The most important thing to remember is that when you are on the front lines and your allies are not, just wait for them. Even AFKing under your turret is better than dying. And when your team is on the front line and you are not, you need to get there instantly, don't should even dare about farming jungle camps along the way, just, just get there, be part of the game, even a few seconds can make the difference. You need to remember that a mistake is usually made multiple times per game, so even if you fix 
just one of them, you will improve a lot. Also, I'm aware that there are more mistakes to cover, so maybe we do a part two video someday. See you next time.